Hello there, my friends. Have I got a great story for you today. This is one of my favorite all-time stories. It's a musical story. Today, I'm going to show you the pictures. I'm going to tell you the story. And then, in the future, you will get to hear the music that goes with this story. So let's get started. Peter and the Wolf. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Peter, and he lived with his grandfather in a little cottage by a meadow in a forest. So a cottage. Think of someone who has a cottage up north, just a cute little house, nothing fancy. And they lived by a meadow. So think of this big, open, grassy area. And then, of course, a forest. Now, one morning, the morning of our story, Grandfather said to Peter, A big hungry wolf has been seen in the forest. You must remember, keep the garden gate shut and do not play in the meadow. A wolf could come out and eat you. Now, Peter listened to his grandfather and did it he, as he was told most of the time. Can you tell from this picture that Peter isn't really listening? He's daydreaming, looking out into that meadow. He sees this cute little bird out there. That bird was just chirping happily, and Peter thought it's much too nice of a day to worry about some old wolf. And so to hear the bird's song better, he opened the gate and went into the meadow. A duck came waddling through the gate also. Peter had left that garden gate wide open. The duck waddled over to the lovely pond near the tree. Now the little bird and the duck were friends, but the bird felt like that pond belonged to her and the meadow too. And so she flew over to pasture the duck. What kind of a bird are you? The little bird chirped. You can't even fly. The duck quacked back. What kind of a bird are you when you can't even swim? And so they argued back and forth, back and forth, the ducks splashing and diving in the water, and that little birdie fluttering and hopping along the edge of the pond. Well, so far, Peter was supposed to keep this garden gate closed, and he was supposed to stay out of the meadow. I'm a little bit worried about what might happen next. Suddenly, something caught Peter's eye. Was it the wolf? No, it was just the farmyard cat slowly crawling through the grass toward the pond. The cat thought, I'll just grab that little bird before he even notices that I am here. Closer and closer, closer and closer, she crept. Now Peter saw what that cat was up to. He shouted. The bird flew up into the tree for safety. The duck quacked angrily at the cat from the middle of the pond. Leave my friend alone! But you know, the cat was not interested in that duck. She walked round and round that tree, hmm, trying to figure out how to catch that bird. If I climb up the tree, she thought, Will that bird fly away? Just then, Grandfather came out. He saw Peter in the meadow. He saw Peter had left the gate open, and he was angry. What would you do if a hungry wolf came out? Grandpapa scolded Peter as he grabbed him by the ear and marched him home. Peter still wasn't worried. He just really wasn't the sort of a boy to be afraid of a wolf. No sooner had Peter and Grandfather gone inside the gate and Grandfather went inside the cottage than a big, hungry, gray wolf came out of the forest. He crept toward the pond, staying well hidden. <sighs> that looks like a hungry wolf to me, my friends. Just then, the cat scampered up the tree after the bird. See that cat scampering up to that branch? Look out! Quacked the duck to the bird. Oh, no. And in the excitement, that duck jumped right out of the pond, right into the path of that hungry wolf. Oh, no. 
The duck ran as fast as he could, but the wolf got closer and closer and closer until, with one gulp, the wolf swallowed the duck whole. Oh my, what atrocious manners, boys and girls. That wolf didn't even stop to chew his food. Such bad manners. And then the wolf began to pace around the tree, eyeing that cat and licking his lips. Meanwhile, the cat crept down the branch toward the little bird. Peter was behind the gate. All at once, he knew how to rescue his friends and catch the wolf. So here's the birdie. See that bird? Here's the cat crawling down the branch to get to the bird. And there's that wolf circling the tree. See if I can go back. So here's Peter. There's the birdie. The cat's just down the branch. And there's a hungry wolf. Now Peter has a great plan. He thinks he's going to catch this wolf and save his friends. I hope he doesn't end up as a wolf snack. Peter ran and he found a strong rope. And then he climbed onto the high stone wall so that he could reach the branch of the tree. To catch this wolf, Peter was going to need the little bird's help. Here he is climbing up. He's going to get to that branch. See the little birdie right here, ready to talk to him. Then he climbed to the tree. He scared that cat away. And he whispered to the bird, Birdie, I need you to fly down around that wolf's head. Be careful though. Don't let him catch you. The bird flew off the branch. She fluttered down around that wolf's head, brushing that wolf's nose with her wings and making that wolf oh so angry. Just when the wolf thought he had caught that bird, the little birdie would dash away. Now Peter inched out on the branch until he was right over the wolf. He made a lasso with his rope and he lowered that lasso down and he looped it around the wolf's tail. And with a mighty pull, he pulled that rope tight. Peter had caught the wolf. See, we can just see the rope here. And he has tightened it and he has pulled it tight around that poor wolf's tail. I bet that would hurt, my friends. He's got one foot off the ground already. Peter must be super strong. The wolf struggled hard to get away, but the more he jumped, the more that rope tightened around his tail. Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. He called down, I am not afraid of some old wolf. Just then a group of hunters came crashing and stomping out of the forest, looking all around for that wolf. Don't shoot, don't shoot, Peter called to them. Look at, look at here, the birdie and I, we have caught the wolf for you. The wolf is very dangerous, called the hunters. Hand him over to us. No, said Peter. I'm not going to let you hurt him. But you can help me. Let's take him to the zoo. Oh my goodness, what a parade this was. On the way to the zoo, Peter led the way, of course. And then the hunters, they were leading the wolf with the rope. And then grandfather and the cat, too. See, here's Peter at the at the start of the parade. And the hunters have that wolf under control. Look at they each have a rope tied to him. They have a muzzle on his on his mouth. That means he's not able to uh, he's not able to bite them. And then I see grandfather. He was really angry earlier, but now he is so proud. He's a brave boy, my Peter, Grandpapa said. And here was the cat following along for the fun. And up above, the little bird chirped merrily. Look what we caught, Peter and I, Peter and I. We have caught the wolf. And they took him to the zoo. Now I bet you're wondering, what about that duck? all the way to the zoo. This is kind of crazy, but all the way to the zoo, the duck sat inside the wolf. Perfectly whole, perfectly well. That duck made so much noise. The wolf actually spit him out. And the duck returned home with Peter and grandfather to have many, many more days of quacking. And that, my friends, is the story of Peter and the wolf. When I see you next, we're going to listen. Every character in this story 
has a little melody. Peter has a tune that's played by violins and the hunters have their very own melody. The birdie has a little song just for them. The flute plays that. Grandfather has his own melody and the cat has a sneaky song all of its own. I love the wolf's tune, but it's very, very mysterious and a little scary. So next time I see you, my friends, we will continue with the story of Peter and the wolf. Now, I hope you're being great listeners already for your guest teacher. I'm depending on you to make the best choices possible. Have a great day, my friends. <laughs>